Hello, everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I took a little break for the past several months just working on some of my other businesses, which I cannot wait to show you what I've been doing. I will do that on my other channel, the Manifold Marketplace. But today I am excited to be here with you talking about what we can do about dealing with narcissists in all types of situations. And today's video is about what to do with a narcissist that will not leave you alone. You have tried everything that you know how to do and they still will not stop contacting you. Uh, everybody's situation is going to be different. And for some of you, you might not be able to go completely no contact. So you're not able to block the narcissist's number and block them on social media, block their email, whatever the case may be, you might not be able to do that in your current situation. But nonetheless, the narcissist shows up at your house, shows up at your job, continuously sends you harassing messages. Maybe the narcissist is even hiring third parties to go spy on you, take photos of you, or harass you just in general. What to do in these situations, because it can feel very overwhelming, you can often feel very alone, and like it's just never going to stop. Before I get into what you can do, first of all, I want to remind you of who you are. You are not worthy of this type of treatment. This is completely unacceptable, and it's really important that you know your rights. If you don't know what your rights are, it's going to be very difficult for you to go enforce them, right? If you don't know what's the right thing to do in this situation, it's going to be very difficult for you to set clear boundaries. It's going to be very hard for you to not only do that externally, but more importantly, to do that internally first. So in other words, you're not sure what you should commit to internally. So therefore, it's very difficult for you to then go ahead and enforce that and express that externally to somebody else, whether that's the narcissist, just even a, a friend that you're processing this with, or if needed, law enforcement, which I'm going to get into in this video. Again, it's just really important that you take time through this process of distancing yourself from the narcissist or narcissists in your life to figure out who you are, what kind of life you want to live, and you appropriately understand what type of actions you need to be taking in order to create that type of life. Again, not everybody's situation is the same. And so for some people, they can go no contact instantly. And for other people, they have to go what, what is called low contact, right? So they distance themselves, but they don't completely cut off contact until until there's a final resolve to their situation, which might be through court or might be through finding a new place to live or splitting or dissolving the business that you share together or whatever your case may be. So for those of you who have to continue to have contact, again, it is very important that you know what kind of life you want to create. Because if you don't know that, everybody's boundaries, you know, there's a million videos on boundaries. I have an entire series. <laughs> there's an entire playlist on my channel just about boundaries and how to set them and what they are and what they look like. And those don't look the same for everybody because everybody's situation is different. And so this is not something where you can just plug and play, so to speak. You can't just take what somebody else has done and assume that's going to work for you. You need to have a clear idea of what you want your life to look like. And from there, you're going to be able to establish boundaries that will have actual consequences. Again, this is an internal job. This is not just saying to the narcissist, stop calling me. I want you to contact my lawyer from now on. I'm not going to respond to you. That type of thing is not a boundary. Okay. I, I know a lot of people believe that that's a boundary. That is a suggestion. A boundary looks like if you continue to contact me, I am going to call the police. I am going to file a harassment charge, okay? I'm not going to show up to these events anymore. Whatever, again, your situation requires. The second thing is that you need to remember a narcissist will not change who they are, okay? So if you want your situation to change, you're going to have to be the person to change. You have to become a different version of yourself. You are going to have to move in a different way than you've ever done your life before. And that's just the, the, the hard truth of it. 
And for a lot of people, what they need to start doing is documenting everything. The things that have become normal to you, the atmosphere that you have decided to live in and gotten comfortable in living in, the constant harassment, the name calling, uh, the gaslighting, all of that type of stuff needs to be documented because what you're calling normal is abuse, okay? Okay. Not just by my definition, but there are federal definitions of abuse that I encourage everybody to go look up. I have linked the federal guidelines of abuse to this video in the description so you can go research those for yourself. You need to document every kind of threat, every kind of accusation. You need to be keeping track of this. So make sure that you have some sort of filing system. You have a documentation system where these normal everyday things that you've usually paid no mind to, or you've kind of just ignored, or you've brushed under the rug, you start taking accountability for these things because this is something that the narcissist is going to have to answer to in your situation. Again, whether that's in civil court or criminal court. And I always tell my clients, you would rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Okay. It can be very overwhelming to start going back and try to document months or even years of this type of behavior. If you start a filing system right now, then you can start creating a new type of schedule for yourself where you just spend a few moments every day starting to document everything that happened in that day so it's not an overwhelming project that you try to catch up on once a week or once a month or worse. If you need a filing system, please go to my website, get the Ultimate Liberation Bundle, and in there is a tracking system that you can use amongst a million other products that you can use to start doing this yourself. The next thing that is really important for you to do is to start sharing your story. I know that this is very hard for people because again, everybody immediately thinks I have to have a press conference or, you know, I have to stand up in a public area and start talking about what's happening to me. That is not at all what I'm suggesting. Although in some cases that is exactly what you need to be doing. For most people, what this means is just not allowing your inner world to become so suffocated with the narcissist voice that all you hear is what the narcissist has said to you, what the narcissist is accusing you of, and all of the things that the narcissist is doing to you without having an outlet where you can actually discuss what is going on and get clear and good healthy advice. In some of my previous videos, I've talked about how in this realm of what to do with a narcissist, there are so many people saying, well, I went to my friends and they told me to do this. Is your friend a specialist in this type of abuse? Because if not, it's like going to an ENT when really what you need is a heart surgeon. I understand they're both doctors. I understand that they both have specialties, but not they are not interchangeable. You need to go to the type of specialist for the issue that you are dealing with. We understand this for our physical life, right? We understand I'm not going to go see a personal trainer when what I need is a CPA, right? The, these two things, yes, they're, they are specialists. Yes, they are both smart. Does it qualify them to give me healthy advice on the issue that I'm seeking? A lot of people would be a lot further along in their healing journey as well as in their separation journey from the narcissist had they gone and stuck with a, a professional in this arena specifically. So understand your friends and family are there to give you emotional support. They should be there to give you uh, physical support as well, you know, if you need a place to stay or whatever. But these are not specialists. These people do not specialize unless they are certified in some sort of area that has to do with, with this specific type of abuse because it is so unlike other types of abuse, okay? There's so much going on in your mind, which translates into a physical trauma bond in your brain. And unless they are specialized in this, it, they will be very confused, very overwhelmed, and just tell you, just stop talking to that person. Just stop, you know, getting involved in that situation. And while that seems like good advice to them, as you know, it's a lot more complicated than then that solution fit. Step number one, make sure you're not isolated. Absolutely be utilizing your friends and family for, for emotional support, for again, physical support, somebody to come along with you to help you file paperwork or 
sit with you when you open up a new bank account or whatever the situation for you might be. But understand that these are not professionals. Please do not expect them to give you professional and accurate advice. It's not their role in your life. And expecting somebody to do something for you, what they cannot do is unfair to not only them, but to you, because you are going to have false expectations. And that's only going to lead unto disappointment for you and for that person resulting in a strained relationship. So please keep people where they belong, right? You don't expect your therapist to also be your banker and your pastor. You expect that person to do the thing that you hired them to do. And please understand that is the same with your friends and family. What's important about this point that I'm trying to make is that you are not isolated, that you are able to take an assessment of what you truly need to have happen in your life. Do you need a separate bank account? Do you need a separate place to stay? Do you need a car in your name? Do you need a cell phone in your name? What is it that you need? And from that place, you can start uh, finding the people who are most appropriate to fill that position in your life. Narcissists thrive on silence. And that's the most important point that I want to make in this entire video is that your voice is so powerful that if you knew the power that it contained, you would have started speaking a year ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. You don't know how powerful your voice is. And the narcissist is banking on it. They are counting on the fact that you don't know how how valuable you are. You don't know how strong you are. You don't know how influential you are. And they are hoping that you never find out. They are hoping that their masquerading of them being the ones who have all of the power, all of the money, all of the connections, that there's no way out. That is such a facade. And it's very important that you start understanding and viewing yourself the way the narcissist views you. The narcissist views you as their supply of everything that they are getting in their life, not just emotional uh, energy, not just mental energy, right? They, that's not the only thing you're, you're supplying to the narcissist. And you really need to start taking account of the things, the, the qualities uh, that you possess and start seeing yourself in that way. And finally, I cannot stress this enough, going along with your voice. Your voice is powerful, and until you learn how to use it with people that you feel safe with, again, that's why I encourage you to not get isolated, that you start hanging out with your friends and family and people who truly love and value you, because you need to start learning how valuable you are and how powerful your voice is, because chances are you are going to need to file a harassment or stalking charge against the narcissist. I personally have been dealing with this lately in my own, in my own life where I have people who will not stop contacting me regardless of how many times I have told them to stop it. And finally, it just gets to the place where you have to decide what that is for yourself. But when it is escalated, there just can't be any more of that. You have to go press charges. Again, this is about your physical safety. Okay. And people who do not support that people who there are going to be people in your life who are not going to support that. Don't make them more angry. Don't escalate the situation. I don't want to get involved. I don't want to have to deal with that. Well, I'm afraid of what's going to happen to me if I speak up. Those people are not your friends. I have many videos talking about what happens when you start separating from a narcissist in terms of your social network. And most people will start falling away because that's just too much, right? There's just too much going on. They can't quite tell who's telling the truth. They can't quite tell what's going on and they just want nothing to do with it. It's just too much, too much drama, too much inner movements. He's saying this, she's saying that, which is again why I encourage you to document everything so it does not turn into a he said, she said situation. You need to have actual proof of what was said, when it was said, how it was said, and the fact that it's continuously being said. So when you are in this situation, you really need to understand not everybody is going to be for me and I'm okay with that. Again, you need to know who you are and the kind of life that you want to live. And if the situation that you're in is not conducive to having that type of life, you need to start making a change. Do not not say anything because you're afraid of escalating the situation until you learn to take a stand that boundary is always going to get moved and moved and moved which is why i said in the beginning of this video most people think they have boundaries but they actually just have suggestions because there's no pushback it's never like hey this is this is the wall you are about to run into right people just kind of let it all go and at some point for you 
it might be different than what my tolerance level is. Everybody needs to make that decision for, for themselves. But most importantly, you need to know what your legal rights are. If you don't know what legally constitutes harassment, what legally constitutes stalking, you're going to keep letting it go on and on, not realizing crimes are being committed against you. Okay, this isn't just something that somebody is doing to annoy you and ignore it. These are legitimate crimes and they need to be held accountable in criminal court. One last thing that I want to say before I end this video is that as much chaos as it feels like is in your atmosphere right now, please know that this is not going to last forever. Okay, this situation that you're in is not going to be going on for the rest of your life. And the sooner you come up with a life plan, the way that you want the rest of your life to go is the sooner that you get out of this situation. It's the sooner that stuff starts to shift and change. If you haven't seen my short videos that I've done, uh, reels on Instagrams or that there are shorts in my YouTube channel on the windmill, please go check that out because I, I talk about the, what people think they're doing and what they're actually getting in return. So if you think you're doing one thing, but you are not having the return that that effort should be giving you, please go check that out because it's so important. There are spiritual laws that govern the natural realm. Just as there are natural laws that govern the natural realm, if I plant a corn seed, I'm going to get a corn plant in return. I'm not going to get a soybean plant. It's the law of reproduction, right? It's going to make something after its kind. So that same thing is happening in the spirit world. You are getting in return what you are sowing. And it's really important that you understand that because if you don't understand that and you think it's everybody else and everybody else has to do these things and then you get the kind of harvest that you want to see, you're mistaken. And understanding the law is the most important part, right? If I don't understand the law of electricity and I go to put my fingers inside the socket, what happens to me? I get shocked and I get shocked badly. A lot of people here are getting shocked and shocked badly by a narcissist because they don't understand the spiritual laws, they don't understand the legal laws, and they don't understand the law of multiplication, which is essentially saying if whatever you, you've got, you're going to be given more of until you decide to make a change. And if you are ready to make a change, I want you to apply to join my Narcissistic Detox Intensive. You can do so by texting me the word DETOX to 512 677 9322. And if you're outside of the United States, please send me an email instead. You can find my email address in the description of this video. Whatever situation you are facing with the narcissist, this is a temporary situation. How fast and the outcome of that situation depend on what you do and when you do it. You are powerful, you are worthy, you are valuable. And that is really what I want you to take away from this video. Find people who see you the way your creator sees you. And I will see you in the next video.